today and some of tomorrow was devoted to, some of next week was devoted to really three chapters in Bob Muchin's book, chapter seven, eight, and nine, which deal with selecting variables, selecting observations, and selecting variables and observations, respect, respectively, in chapter seven, eight, and nine. So as I was preparing the material using scripts from the book, I, it occurred to me that um, I had some material myself that actually I think is more complete and more R specific. So I'm, I'm going to defer to that. So I, I prepared his material as well. That is, I took his scripts and annotated them somewhat. And you have those available to you. They're in the folder for today and they're, um, they're on the, uh, they're on his website, R for Stats, as well. But also, I've given you this, which really encapsulates uh, all of the issues about selecting variables, observations, and combinations of the two in a more condensed form. So I'm, I'm going to use this. Now, what are we talking about? Um, we've already covered quickly the, the basics of structures the difference between a vector and a matrix and a data frame and a list. These issues are more important if you're using R than if you're using SAS or SPSS. You, you might not even be aware of the, of the data structures in those, uh, with those other languages because the scripting languages are more high level. They're high level languages. They're not really programming programming languages per se. And so, uh, again, I, a bit embarrassed. It's been a few years since I've used SAS, but I, I don't remember any attention whatsoever to data sets other than having, you know, two-dimensional text, text files that you could access. It's very important in R. And for, for today, rather than spending more time talking about those structures, we're going to, going to be looking at data frames, which are the analogous structure to spreadsheets and data frames you can think of a data frame as comprised of vectors columns or vectors so here here are the issues that we're going to be looking at and we're going, going to be doing it live but you have these slides you have slides in fact of every single live script that I'm going to execute slides sometimes have an advantage you can explain things on slides that you can't explain in the script. But we're going to use the script and you have the slides. So you can print out the slides. I gave you a slide deck where there's six of them on a page so you don't have to kill a bunch of trees. So you, you have both, but we're going to use the scripts. Now these are the issues that we're, we're, going, to, we're going to cover. Uh, it will take probably, I'm sure it'll take today and next week, some of next week, if not all of next week. But this is an important topic. I mean, we're not just trying to f waste time. This, this really goes to the very heart of what everyone needs to know. So a quick primer here on the slide. Of course, a data frame is a structure, a particular structure in our data frames are where are the, the structure that you will use when you input your data into various functions to, to manipulate them, not only to manipulate them, but to um, to mathematically uh, manipulate them. That is, if you're loading in data to perform regressions or ANOVAs or path models or whatever it is, uh, they're, going to be in the, they're going to be data frame structures. And we, rather than elaborate too much on that, note that they look like spreadsheets. And you have columns that represent variables and you have rows that represent observations. Now, a, a, a critical factor, characteristic of data frames, which is common to spreadsheets as well, is that every each column, you can think of each column as a variable, and each column contains a type of data that is the same, that is a column, each column will be numeric or a string, character, text type data, or perhaps a date, or perhaps true, false, or perhaps a factor, but the whole column will be of one data type. 
However, in the data frame itself, each column can be a different data type. So that's typical of spreadsheets. It's also typical of, of the data frame structure in R. Okay, so again, Bob's book, Chapter 7, talks about variables, Chapter 8, observations, and 9, both. So we're just going to roll it all up. Now, um, I gave you this data in your in your in the um, file for today. There's a zip file, the R book, which again was available on the internet, and I provided you that zip file. Worms.txt is in that file, and in these scripts, I've got them all on my temp. I've got them in a temp folder on my C drive, as you can see here. Uh, just because that's where I keep all my R files and I didn't want to recode everything to my R folder. So if you use these scripts directly, bear in mind you need to have a temp folder and you just simply put all of the data files inside of that folder and I gave them to you today. So you should be good to go. Now um, let's see, well let's move right on over to the to the script and here here it is okay so this the script is abbreviated that is the explanations are abbreviated so I, I may be flipping back and forth a bit but I'll try not to so so here we go now note something right off the bat first of all note the syntax of this read table statement um, I've, I've used, R is very forgiving. I've used two backslashes. R will accept two backslashes, both here at the root and here uh, to designate the beginning of the file name. Uh, where Windows won't do this. Windows wants just one backslash, but as we mentioned before, one backslash is reserved in R for an escape character. It's used for... Um, to indicate that the character that follows means something else. It's used for regular expressions, for text processing, and for escape characters elsewhere. So R is very forgiving. That is, you can do this to designate when you're uh, showing the entire path. You can use a double backslash. You can use, you could use a forward slash. What you can't do is this. You can't do this which is the correct format syntax for Windows. Okay, so note another thing, um, header is true. With read table, you must say header is true because the default is header is false. With read CSV, as we probably mentioned, the default is flipped. With read CSV, the default is header is true. And I'm not sure why they did that, but they but they did. So okay, so anyway, here we read it in, so we just will execute that line. And you can see what's going on down here in the console. Note one other thing that we need to explain to mention to make it clear. We're attaching this data set. And we're doing that uh, so that we can reference the names of the variables directly without using their long form of syntax. Generally, the way you reference a variable name would be if you had a variable called um, pH level in worms, you would reference the variable, you would say worms dollar sign pH level to reference that variable in worms. You'd have to say the name of the file, worms dollar sign pH level. But it gets tiresome to type in that longhand over and over again. And if you attach it, then you can just reference the variable directly, P pH level. There's a danger to attaching, and we'll get into that later. But for this exercise, we're going to attach it. It makes a huge difference on all of the script that follows. It won't work unless you attach it. Okay, so first of all, let's look and see what we got there. So names just simply prints out the the headers for the columns. Now let's um let's look at the head. Let's I'm not sure why I didn't do this before. Head um, head is the command shows the first six records. 
I can't get to your questions right now. We're, we'll have to reserve them until um, later. Head shows. So if we do head, okay, this is kind of a large file. So let's try this one more time. And I will come back to your question. I'm sorry. Head. There we go. Okay, so head shows the first six records. Head's a handy command because you don't want to be pumping out the entire data frame and having to um, uh, cursor up and down. Linda's asking about path names for Macs. I'm not sure what the answer to that is. I'd have to check. You don't have a path name. Um, just try try to call the file. It's probably in the active. I, I don't know. I'd have to look. I have a Mac, but I'm a Mac is my left hand. I, I have a Mac and I use a Mac. Um, but in in this in the scripts here with R Studio, it wouldn't matter. If you're using R Studio, right? That's one of the reasons why I like this. If you're using R Studio and you attach the data set, these commands will work in a Mac. And uh, I believe without any modification. So that's one of the that's one of the reasons why I like it. If I ever don't answer your question and you think that I gave you the wrong answer or a bad answer or I ignored you, which I never mean to do, send me an email, okay? And I'll uh, emails I try to keep up with better because they stay on my server. Uh, so anyway, so now we're going to so there's our worms data. And now we're going to use subscripts. Um, here we can reference the, it'd be the third row and the, the fifth column, one, two, three, four, five. So it should be this one, 4.3. So if we use what actually are indexes, they're often referred to as subscripts, but actually they're indexes and they're given by R. So we're referencing uh, this one element. Now we're going to start off slow, but I promise you uh, it won't be slow for too long. Now note a couple of things. Though. Note something I should have mentioned before. When we read in this data set, this text file, it did not have these row, row numbers. When you show a, a data frame object, a data frame structure in R, R requires that the columns have names and that the rows have names as well. If you don't have names in the column headers and in the rows, it, it will give it names. Now we had names, that's why we said header equals true. We didn't have names for the rows. These are actually row names. And what R does, it puts in numbers for the row names, but it's it's looking for row names and if you don't have anything in there it'll give it numbers they're not this isn't a variable and these are unchanged when you sort the uh, when you sort the file <clears throat> now in my old SAS days the first thing I would do is I would create a column on the far left of my data set whatever it was I'd create a column and I would enumerate it from one to the end with what I would call ID or observation number. So I'd put a column in there to number everything so that when I started, you know, messing up, manipulating the data set, I could always get it back to its original point. R does that for you by putting in these row names that are num actually numbers by default, but you can name these as well.